Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining me at the table. It's been over a month since we've been together, and in that time, a lot has happened. Well, for one thing, I had shingles, and some of you already know that, but uh, thank goodness it's all gone. It was right here on top of my head, but it's all gone now. And I promised you when we left for the mid-season finale that there will be some changes. One of the changes that I made is look at this comfy chair that I'm sitting in. No longer do I have to worry about sitting on those hard chairs all this time. So anybody who wants to come join me, there will be another comfy chair sitting right here so that you can come and talk to me here at the table. I'm sure that just wants, gets all of you wanting to come out and join me because I do need some people to interview for this second half of season one. I have changed the format. I will be talking me alone and then having an interview and then me alone and having an interview like that back and forth. And also there is a significant change that I hope doesn't upset too many people. And that is that we are going to be moving to a different night and time. And the reason for this is there's a lot going on now here at First United Methodist Church in Belair. And as a result, I need to adjust the schedule, not only for other people that have different meetings, but also so that I don't get burned out by being here four nights a week. So what we're going to do is we're going to start broadcasting on Thursday, Sept September. I don't remember the exact day. The first Thursday in September at six o'clock, it'll be the episode 14 will be on Thursday night, not on Wednesday night. I'll keep uh, putting out posts on Facebook to tell everybody next week now for episode 13, there will be an interview and it will be Wednesday night at 7 p.m. normal time, okay? But next week after that, Thursday, um, we will start at our 6 p.m. time frame from 6 to 6.30. And if you can't watch it live because you got something going on on Thursday night, I apologize for that, but you can always go back to the, the Facebook page and watch it anytime you want. And plenty of people will be sharing it. Have you shared this one yet? What are you waiting for? Click on that little share button and share it with all your friends so they can see what's going on. I think this is one they're going to want to know and talk about anyway. So I will keep you updated on that change. And then we will see you again Wednesday next week and then starting on Thursday after that. Okay, um, another thing that I want to point out is we got a lovely little tree here for some decorations. So just trying to change things up a little bit, you know, keep it exciting. Um, it's been, it was a great first half of the season one. And because of some of the things that happened, like when I restarted Kenny Hess's video <laughs> interview, when I tripped over the microphone with the kids table, um, we're going to have a bloopers uh, video sometime towards the end of this season before we start season two. So be looking for that. I got lots of stuff that I can put together, lots of stuff from behind the scenes that you haven't seen, and I am guarantee it's going to make you laugh. I'm laughing just thinking about what you're going to see. But let's get down to the topic tonight. How do you know if you're hearing from God? So the title of this broadcast is, Is That You, God? I remember years ago, when I was just, you know, starting to go back to church, I went to church as a child maybe five, maybe six times, I, maybe seven, I don't know, not very often. But when I was starting to get back into going to church and getting closer to God, I had friends that were always talking about, well, God said this and God said that. And I'm sitting there thinking, why doesn't God talk to me? I mean, he, does, he talks to all these other people. Why doesn't he talk to me? And so I went to God about it, and I said, God, how do I hear from you? I don't hear an audible voice. I don't hear, you know, bells and singing, and I don't hear angels standing before me proclaiming that God is speaking to you like they did with Mary. That didn't happen. But over time, I started to get these thoughts in my head. Now, as a child, I had these little thoughts come into my head all the time, but that was for a different reason, and it, and it was God. But I started to want, when I wanted to have that relationship with God, he started speaking. Now, before we get into that, I want to do a little exercise with you. I want you to think to yourself in your mind. I want you to say something to yourself. Like, I want you to say, hey, Phil is looking really good tonight, and this is a great show that he's got going on. So just say that to yourself in your head or whatever you want to say. Just take a moment and think. Okay. What voice did you hear in your head? 
Did you hear your own voice? Was it some variation of what you think you sound like? More than likely, yes, right? When I talk to myself in my head, I hear myself talking. It's not God's voice, it's my voice. So when you hear your own voice, it's not God. God is going to speak to you in a different voice, one that is not audible. But the way you hear yourself talk in your head, that's how God likely, not always now, bear with me, one of the ways that God will talk to you is you'll just get a thought come to mind. And I remember thinking a thought would come to mind and I'd say, God, is that you? And the thought would come to mind again and it would just keep repeating. That, and after time, I stepped out on faith and I said, oh, you told me to call this person. And it kept coming over and over in my head repeatedly, call this person, call this person. And I didn't do it, but the next thing you know, that person calls and says, hey, I was thinking about you. That's God. And that's one of the ways he may help you understand he's talking to you. So here's two things you need to know here. It's not your own voice. You'll hear, if you hear a voice, like, like you're talking to yourself, you hear voices when you talk to yourself. I'm not talking about hearing voices, you know, that's something different. But when you hear yourself talking in your head, if you hear a different voice, it sounds a little different. It might sound like you, but a little bit different. Question, is that you, God? And if he says yes, or if you feel like, yes, God is telling me to do X, that God is telling me to step out of the boat. Remember what happened to Peter when he stepped out of the boat. He saw Jesus walking on the water. He steps out of the boat. He starts going towards Jesus, and he was walking on water. He saw God. He heard, and he, God, Jesus said to him, come to me. And he stepped out, and he walked. He did it on faith. When he looked down, that's when everything started to happen. He started to sink, but he walked in faith. So if God is saying to you, I want you to go to the store and buy a gallon of milk. Okay, well, why would I buy a gallon of milk? Where did that come from? That's another thing to look for. If it's something that you think would not really come from you, was that you, God? Okay, so this, this is something that could happen. Go to the store, buy a gallon of milk. If you don't do it, okay, you move on. But if you do it, and then you hear, hand it to the person in the checkout, that may or may not happen, but if it does and you do, and the person says, oh my goodness, I needed milk and I didn't have enough money to buy it, then you just heard from God and you did what he said to do, and now he confirmed it for you. Okay, that was pretty grand, but maybe it's something simple like, I want you to call your sister. Okay, well, I haven't talked to my sister for months. I want you to call your sister. You hear that in your head. So you call your sister, Oh, I've just been having a bad day. I'm so glad you called. I really wanted to talk to you. That's God confirming for you. When you step in faith, God is going to confirm it for you. Now, if you hear things like, I want you to play the lottery. Stop right there. God doesn't, not that he doesn't want you to have some money. God is not going to tell you to play the lottery, most likely. It's a very rare thing. If you hear that, ask if that's God. And if it keeps coming, Listen to that voice again. That might be your voice telling you to play the lottery. God's probably not going to tell you to play a lottery. He's not going to tell you to steal a car. He's not going to tell you to kill someone. He, here's another thing. Very important. If you hear in your head, well, don't worry about him. He's a jerk anyway. Oh, that is not God. I don't care what this guy did to you or what this girl did to you or what your husband did or what your kids have done or what someone did to your kids. I don't care who it is or what it was that was done. God is never going to talk badly about someone like that, especially if it's someone that is a Christian. Christians do bad things sometimes, and God is not going to talk badly about them. So just put that thought out of your head right now. That's coming from a different source, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So that's one way, the little voice inside your head that you might hear him. A lot of times we have these gut feelings. You know, sometimes you really feel it in your gut, and that's why we call it a gut feeling. Sometimes it's a little nudge. You're sitting in church, there's an altar call, and you feel like, go up there, 
and it, it's you start to get this tingling sensation or the gut feeling or maybe you hear the voice go up there and uh, you almost feel like you're starting to lift up off the pew yeah i i know some people think they're glued to the pews on sunday but they don't have to be okay you can actually step up from them and and, and worship god okay so you feel like god's saying go up there then do it okay that's probably god that's another way he speaks to us is through that nudging that that tingling sensation it it can be many ways another way is we sometimes hear we think in our head and then we hear from somebody else let me tell you a story about what happened to me one time i heard someone say that jesus was not only the son of god that he was god in the flesh now keep in mind in my childhood i knew who jesus was i didn't know that he was god i didn't go to church but six times maybe seven so i didn't know what would what all i needed to know so i hear someone say that god or jesus is god in the flesh that he was born and then it was god as jesus was that little baby and i thought why did i not know this so i went to god and i said god is that true you got to let me know somehow if that's true i didn't hear a voice in my head saying yes that's true phil what happened to me the next day i get in my car yes i was old enough to drive and i'm driving to work yes i was out of college i was driving to work and i turn on the radio and it was on a station like caleb but this was in columbus ohio i don't know what station it was and the first thing they said was what a miraculous thing that god became flesh and dwelt among us and quoted the verse from isaiah i went Oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. So I knew then that God had answered my prayer. And that's the way he spoke to me. He spoke to me through another source. He spoke to me through a radio program. He answered my question. So all of you out there who are watching me and hearing me right now and are saying, nope, not me. God does not talk to this person. No, I'm telling you right now, God speaks to every single person one of us every one of us he speaks now he speaks to some more so than others why because just like any gentleman god is a gentleman and he, if you don't want to hear from him if you ignore him if you just say god i don't want to hear from you you won't hear a word if you say god i am not hearing from you then he might back off a little bit till you're ready to hear from him but if you go to God right now after this program, don't stop watching the program. Wait till after the program. If you go to God, no, I'm just kidding. You can do it right now. Of course you can. God's more important than I am. But if you go to God and say, I want to hear from you. I believe what he just said, and I want to hear from you more. And I already know there's somebody out there who's questioning this, and I know who you are. And you're, right now you're thinking, no, this isn't me. He doesn't talk to me. Yes, he is. And after this program, you're going to talk to him and you're going to hear something back. And God's going to say to you that, yes, this is me talking. What he said was real. Now, it's going to be something like that. OK, now, if you hear that exactly, you're going to say, oh, that was just because that what Phil said. God, I can't tell you what God's going to say because you're going to know then that that was just Phil talking. But he's going to talk to you tonight. Close your eyes and listen and you'll hear him. There's actually two or three or four people now that he's talking to right this very moment, and he's going to be talking to you tonight. But this does not change overnight. One night I put a piece of corn in the ground. I went out there the next day and I looked. I didn't see a thing. I went out there the following day, I looked. I still didn't see anything. I went a week later, is that a weed or is that a piece of corn growing? I went back in two weeks, I saw a little tiny plant. And then after a couple months, yep, knee high, on the fourth and beyond, it was high. It takes time for these things to grow. Now, some of you may immediately start hearing from God and never stop hearing. Just like my daughter, when she, my youngest daughter, when she first started talking, she starts speaking in sentences right away. And she, well, she has shut up since. But anyway, you may be one of those people that you hear tonight and you'll never stop hearing. But you might be a person who say, okay, I heard something. And then tomorrow you might be like, well, I didn't really hear anything. Okay, then go to him first. You don't have to wait for God to speak to you. 
go to him. Find a place quiet. Close your eyes. Get on your hands and knees if you want. Lay down in bed. Sit in a chair. Just st- sit there and kind of look around and keep your eyes open, but in your mind saying, God, I really would like to hear from you right now. What, would, what do you want me to do? What can I do today? How can I serve you today? The more you do it, the better you're going to be. Just like the more you exercise, the stronger you get. Those guys with those big muscles and those girls with the big muscles, they don't get that overnight. Not at all. It takes a long time. God's not going to make you wait a long time, but give it time because he, it's not because he doesn't think you're ready. It's because he wants you to understand so you can grow in your faith and so you'll keep coming back to him. He's not going to come to you every time. If you want to know God is speaking to you, then go to him. Because that's not only going to help you understand when he is talking, but it's going to cultivate a relationship with him. And ultimately, that is more important than anything else. Just like all those people who are watching right now, the faithful people watching on Facebook and making comments, you've been watching for the last few weeks, okay? We've cultivated this relationship. And I always say we because you are a part of this with me. But we cultivated that relationship. I didn't just flip on Facebook one night and say, hey, start watching me. You had to get comfortable with me. You had to get to know me, okay? It's the same thing with God. Just like any friendship, the first time you bump into someone in the grocery store, you don't immediately become friends. It usually doesn't happen that way. It takes time. You cultivate it. How do you cultivate a relationship with God? God, is that you? Is that you talking to me? If it is, then say something again. God, how are you today? God, what would you like me to do today? That's a perfect one. What would you like me to do today? And then just kind of blank out your mind and listen. Or if you get that gut feeling or something you heard on the radio and you hear it again and again, and there's other ways too. I'm not covering them all. The important thing is there is no prescribed way. When you have a headache, you can take some Advil or Tylenol prescribed way to get rid of that headache sometimes, right? Doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. There's no prescribed way to not only hear from God, but to have a relationship with God. It's something that you individually have to discover for yourself because the discovery is part of the excitement. And maybe you can come to me someday and say, this is how I'm hearing from God. And you might tell me, and I'm like, that is incredible because I've never heard that type of thing before. I just gave you three instances, and there are more that I could get into if we had time, but maybe you'll find a new way, or maybe you'll find several ways. There are several ways that God speaks to several people. It's not always just one, but you'll get to the point, I promise you this, you will get to the point where you will say, God, it's me. What would you like me to do today? Like that, you're going to have an answer. And you're going to know what to do. Then it's up to you to do it or not. Because sometimes it might be a little uncomfortable to do. Okay, God, you know, really, let's talk about this. You really want me to call that person that kind of hates me? You know, it may be uncomfortable. You really want me to go talk to my boss? Really? So if I were to tell you to do something that was uncomfortable as your friend, you might say, I'm not going to do that. You're crazy. Okay? Okay. You can tell God he's crazy, okay? He's not, but you can say that. But just be ready for when he shows you how crazy he really is not. One thing, okay, somebody just put on Facebook. I'm going to read this to you. I write everything down. I've done this for years, and he's telling me now to tell you to say a prayer for all who want to realize that he is always there for you to talk to and receive his love that can fill your soul and top everything will come to pass and you will be blessed for your whole life over and over again. Amen. I'm going to do that right now. So let's say a prayer. Father, I pray that you will help every single person who wants to know that you're speaking to them. I pray that you will help them realize that you are speaking and help them understand your voice and your way of talking to them so that they will know you and have a stronger relationship with you and they will be overflowing 
with joy, peace, love, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. So if you prayed that prayer with me, or if you're watching the rebroadcast and praying that prayer right now, God is going to start talking to you. I'm telling you, your life is going to be different when you hear God speaking to you. And it's not going to be grandiose things. He's not going to tell you to become the next Billy Graham. He's not going to tell you to go make a, well, he did tell me to go make a, a YouTube show, a Facebook show, and I did. But he's not going to tell everybody to do that. But if he does, then do it. If he tells you to call someone, call them. If he tells you to visit someone, visit them. If he talk, tells you, talk to the pastor and say, I'd like to get involved more, then do it. If he tells you to give more money at church, then do it. Whatever he's telling you. But we, as pastors, as people in the church, we can't tell you. God is the one who tells you. The most important relationship you can have is not with your spouse, not with your children, it's with God. Yes, your spouse is important. Yes, your children are important. Your friends are important. But God is the greatest friend you can ever have because he will help your life. Now, we probably all know this as we've gone through our lives. It's not always easy, okay? It's not always easy to hear from God. Sometimes we hear other voices that mimic God. Just like when Moses was before the Pharaoh and he laid down his staff and it became a snake, Pharaoh called over three magicians. They laid down their staffs and they became snakes. They mimicked the power of God. But what happened? Moses' staff ate those three snakes. Nice meal that night, huh? And then it became a staff again. Okay, what I'm saying is there is an enemy among us who loves to mimic the voice of God. They're the ones who are telling you that that person who wronged you is such a jerk. That's not God. That's not God. That's the enemy. They're the ones who are telling you that guy just cut you off. It is okay. I'm allowing you to scream at him. That is not God. Okay, God's the one saying, calm down. And then if you don't calm down, he's the one saying, was that really necessary? Oh, believe me, that happened to me. I got really angry leaving here last week from church. And for whatever reason, I can't remember now, somebody got cut me off or whatever. And I got really angry. And I kind of had a little bit of road rage. And I know those of you that know me really well are saying, yeah, all right, okay. But anyway, when I got done and I calmed down, God said to me, was that necessary, Phil? Such a calming voice too. Such a, it was like, Daggone it. Yeah, I'm sorry, God. I did do that. And it's happened since then, and I haven't lost my cool. Okay? I'm human. I'm sorry. We know, we know what that's like, right? Okay. So, I want to say that I believe that each and every one of us here tonight can hear from God. Because if you love someone, you talk to that person, Right? whether it's audible, or if you can't talk, sign language, okay, or touching, or, you know, you might give a, you know, an eye raise like that. We communicate in many ways, not just with our voice. God communicates in many ways as well. Sometimes it's that still, small voice in your head, and sometimes we allow the enemy to just flush him out, and God just stands back and waits for you to come to him and when you do, his voice, when he's speaking, no other voices can be heard. They will get shut out. They will try so hard. They will cause confusion. They, not God, will cause confusion. They will cause you to question yourself. They will cause you to get headaches. They will cause you to think you are going insane. Let it all out. Tell God, I want to hear from you and you will hear from him. I got lots of comments coming in now, so keep them coming. I won't be able to read them all tonight on the air because the show's coming to an end here pretty soon. But please, continue to write comments on this thread. I would love to hear from you. Um, so again, tonight, those four or five people that are coming to mind, I want you to sit down, and you know who you are, 
and you're probably right now saying, I can't believe he's saying that again because I was just thinking about that. Yeah, that's God working, telling me what to say to you, okay? Ask God to talk to you tonight. Ask him again tomorrow. Ask him. God loves you. It is possible for you to be loved. The enemy's telling you you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You can't be loved. But God loves you. Okay? So I want you to live like you're loved. That's going to be another topic in a couple of weeks. Live like you're loved. Knowing that God loves you, live like that. Talk to him. Understand him. And take that step of faith. Because if you do it wrong, I heard a wonderful thing a couple weeks ago. When God gives you a test, you do not fail. Okay? You might have to take that test over again, but you'll never fail because God never fails. So if God's saying to you to do something and you, and you do it wrong or you think that it was God and you do something and you realize that really wasn't God, that's happened to me before too, then when those things happen, retake the test. You don't fail and then you're done. You don't give up. God will let you retake the test. And guess what? You get to retake it until you pass. I don't care if it's one time, 50 times, a thousand times. You never fail with God. You retake the test until you pass and that builds your faith and then you're ready for the next one. Okay? So I'm going to call it a night. It's great to be back. I am super excited to be back. I hope you're all excited. This is a very comfortable chair. You can sit in one right next to me if you want to come talk to me some night. Just get a hold of me. Love to talk to you. I'll talk to anybody about anything. Okay? Anything at all. So let me know. We'll get together. We'll talk at the table. And I'll see you again next week for an interview on Wednesday. But then again, rem remember, in case you join late, after that, we're switching to Thursday. Okay, so next Wednesday at 7 p.m. After that, it'll be Thursday at 6 p.m. All right? It was great having you with me tonight. Love talking to you. God was talking to me. I hope he's talking to you right now. And if he's not, sit down and ask him, God, is that you? Because he does talk to every single one of us. He really does. I'll see you next week at the table.